Hey there, everybody. Let's get started. Uh, another wonderful, beautiful Saturday morning. I mean, just check this out. We had a week of rain, heavy rain. Just every day, rain. I got tired of rain. I got tires in a Jeep last week. I have to talk about this in another video. This was a rebuild I did on Copart. It's a 2004 Jeep TJ Rubicon. And it was a fun build. I'm mostly complete. All I have to do now is do an alignment on the front end. I y'all do a video on that. And then figure out what I'm gonna do with the bumper. I need to do some driving with it and articulate the suspension to see if I have any rubbing with these tires. So, there's my dog, Sasha. One of the lookouts. I got some goats and chickens over there. It's just a beautiful day and I love to be outside, so I'm gonna work today with the garage door open. So, if you remember last time, I got the car fired up. It actually started on the second try. So it wasn't running quite as well as you would want, but it had been sitting for 20 plus years. Ooh. That was Lily. Border Collies like to talk. Um, anyways, a day later, I came back out to the car, fired it up, started up great and noticeably was running a lot smoother. So, you know, sometimes you just gotta give a little time for the oil to get worked around everything. You know, get your fluids moving again. Um, I mean, if it was a fresh rebuild, I would expect it to run a lot better, but we're looking at sensors that are old, just a lot of old things. And even I replaced a lot of things, there were things left on the table that I did not replace yet. So I'm gonna address a little bit of that today. Um, I got a few things in. I needed some more coolant. I got a kit so I can burp the system. Cap and rotor. Got a new idle airspeed controller, as well as a throttle position sensor. A little bit more sea foam. I put the recommended amount in the oil. What I'm gonna be doing is, after a few heat cycles, I will change the oil. Uh, the oil, was changed beforehand. I figured I didn't need to have there, all that in there. It's kind of rudimentary. Um, but I'm going to let this oil with the seafoam circulate through a few heat cycles. Then after that, I'm going to drain oil again. And I'm going to use a little bit of the rear main seal. Um, I used to think this was snake oil until I ended up in a situation with, um, it wasn't an engine, but it was like a shock, absor shock absorber type of thing that had some rubber seals in it. And what I ran into with the rubber seals is that I couldn't get them anymore. So I drained all the oil out of it and I actually put straight main seal liquid into it. I didn't use it. It's a little thicker than the oil I was using. And well, I used all but about a few ounces, which is really all I would have needed in the first place by their recommendations. Uh, I gave it a week. I drained everything out, uh, filled it back with the proper fluid, put a little bit of that main seal stop because it, what it's really doing is it's helping rejuvenate the properties of the rubber seals. And sure enough, um, problem solved. So it was a good item to check it out on. Um, there again, I thought it was snake oil, but I'm a believer now. So my purpose for this is not just the main seal, which does have a very small leak, but also, you know, you got the valve seals. This is a 195,000 mile car. I don't believe the motor has ever been replaced. Um, surprisingly, when it started up, I did not get a big cloud of smoke or anything. As I've started a few more times through the week, I've not gotten any smoke out of the exhaust. I thought, I really expected to see a little bit of blue smoke from oil leaking past the valve seals, but I have not. So I'm rather impressed with that. 
Um, the only thing that I had really coming out of the exhaust was a lot of little nutshells. Squirrels and mice had been making nests down the exhaust of this car for quite some time. Uh, luckily so far I haven't had any encounters with mice chewing up wiring, thank goodness. Um, I had some mice that were in the air ducts under the footwells apparently. I'd, I'd seen some spots of a few mouse droppings, not much, and a little bit of paper towel shreddings that had gone into the air ducts. The other thing I had not mentioned when I first opened this car up to bring it home was as soon as I opened up the passenger side door was the four foot long snake skin I found that looked like a typical black snake or king snake. So apparently he smelled the, the mice living in the car and went in and took care of it for me and then vacated. Uh, it was a little creepy going in there with a snake skin, but I never found the snake, he never found me. Uh, I, I guess we both went our separate ways. He went on to bigger and better things out in the field somewhere with more mice, all the power to him. Snake may have saved the car from electrical damage, who knows. Um, but that's what we're gonna do today is idle air speed controller, top off the coolant, and throttle position sensor along with the cap and rotor. And something I'm sure some people have noticed while I'm doing my work, I usually have a YouTube channel on. Right at the moment, it, it is my Corvette life. He's actually doing a video right now on the exact same thing we did on the second video, which is nasty fuel, nasty fuel pump, the fuel pump assembly being rusted in two pieces. Honestly, when that video came up, I was having a moment where I thought somebody might have taken some of my content because it looked exactly like what I went through two weeks ago. It was eerie, so I dropped them a message and said, hey, check my channel out. So check that out. Um, he's doing a Callaway twin turbo right now, basically. Uh, somebody else has got a black Corvette. He's got a black 1984 Corvette he's working on right now. It's Daredevil 7442. He's got some really good content on there. He does some really good how-tos. Um, so check him out. Uh, I follow him. I follow both of these people because I like seeing what's going on with the Corvettes. And it's kind of cool because we're all doing it at the same time right now. So check it out. Uh, subscribe, like all our pages. Um, so I'm gonna get started. Hey there, it's me. So made a little bit of progress here on the idle airspeed controller was the first thing I was getting into. I'm not doing a ton of how-to videos because there's already a ton of how-to videos. So if I'm doing something different or I catch something that I haven't seen in these videos, then it's, that's what I'm more prone to point out. Um, so with the idle airspeed controller, everybody talks about just using a pair of ice grips to take that thing off. And I guess some cars, the clearance isn't as tight with a throttle body and the fuel rail underneath it. But on mine, I couldn't get a grip on it. Um, what I ended up doing was just taking the four 10 millimeter bolts that hold the throttle body to the intake runner off. And then I could get a little bit of movement on it. And then it, it gave me the clearance I needed to get the thing cracked loose and, and spin it off. The other thing I came to notice was that it had been changed before. It was nasty but it had not one, they come with a gasket. It came with not, it had not one, but two gaskets between it. So I don't know if that would have affected my idle. My idle was going up and down significantly. And once in a while it would stall. Um, in the process, I already had carb cleaner here. So I thought I'd clean the throttle body real good while I had the bolts out. I went ahead and took the water lines loose. So I didn't have enough water or coolant in the system to pour out anyway yet. So I thought I would take everything loose, pull it over to the side, and clean out the throttle body really good. A couple things I noticed while cleaning out the throttle body was that right down in here, you see that little, there's a little hole down there. A little square hole. That was almost totally gummed up with carbon. Black nastiness, which comes from right here. So I used my carb cleaner and stuck it down in there and it blew everything out. So you follow the channel, the channel comes out and goes to the vacuum line. The vacuum line also 
was totally gummed up. So I blew it out. I think while I'm at it, I might replace, I'll blow out the T connector and then replace some more vacuum line. As I have another four or five feet, and I replaced some of the vacuum line on a car already. But that's what I'm finding so far. I'll show the other. Now it's Alex from Legit Street Cars. I'm watching him put the S65 back together. But yeah, this is one of the gaskets. This one came off rather easy. The other gasket was stuck. So I'm wondering, I mean, this is pretty nasty. Get it in focus. I also broke that off in the process of trying to get things apart. But if that thing is pushed back, say another 30, 40 thousandths of an inch, isn't going to make a difference on the idle airspeed controller. Now that I'm looking at it, it's also kind of off center. Hmm. But we have a new one going in. Why not? The car is set for a long time. These parts are not expensive. Um, if this was, you know, a normal running vehicle, I'd go, I'd do more diagnostics on individual items, but with it being a 1985, a lot of stuff never being replaced, and it's sitting for so long, I really don't mind changing out things and going with new. If it wasn't for that, for doing that with a lot of the fuel system, I'm very positive it not would have, it would have not fired up as easy as it did. So, I'll update you on the next progress. Here we go. It's cleaned out. Get everything put back together. Well, most of it. I got my air intake with my mass airflow sensor dangling down here, but right now I'm checking my TPS. I got it at 0.54 volts. I found a good ground. It's right over here. That worked out pretty well. My first ground was over here, right down here. That didn't work out so well. I was getting like 0 0.01 volts. So there's plenty of how-tos, but that is your basically the main thing. I did retain the old Torx bolts. I kept with the same hardware. The other one was just a couple of washers and lock washers with a couple of Phillips heads and they look like that cheap pot metal. So I stayed with the hardware. Anyways, let's get the rest of this back together. How is that for an improvement on the idle? This is so much better. so I can't set the idle perfect right now but once I get gauges in the car then I'll set it and reset the TP throttle position sensor well I'm gonna call it a day I also washed it the Porsche is about to get cleaned wheels and tires look a whole lot better i just got tired of working on something dirty nasty so it was time to give it a good clean i still have to buff it which i've experimented in a couple of spots in the car this car was repainted a single stage paint at some point in its life but this spot of the hood I, I buffed out. It doesn't look bad except for these spots where the paint has been rubbed through. 
I did not do that, but there's not much I can do about it now. But should not look too bad for a high mileage car just to play with on the weekends, get around town a little bit. So far I'm happy with it. I just wish the dash would work. That's all I got so far. The idle seems a little bit low, but once I put a new dash in here, I'll be able to set that properly. But it's running a lot better than it was before. Starts pretty decent too. I'm also gonna do the mod that Dare Double 7 442 did. I have the fan on all the time with the key on. I don't like it not coming on. I tried to find a sensor that would close the circuit at 180 degrees and I haven't been able to find one yet. If anybody knows where you can buy the sensor where we can change that to be a lower setting, let me know. I'm really curious. All right. Well, I think that's enough for today. So uh, thank you very much for watching. Like and subscribe. There'll be more. And I'll see you later.